Well, as promised, joining us live in the studio now, Liberal Democrat Senator for New South Wales, David Leinhelm. Senator, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Now, we are talking about transport today, although it's of the rail variety, but uh, I know you've got an article that's going to appear in tomorrow's Fin Review about the the immense taxes that motorists pay. So when you buy a new car, you, you pay import tax because all cars are imported now. You pay luxury car tax if the car's worth more than 70 grand. There are state government taxes. There's tax every time you pull up at the Bowser and fill up. Um, why do motorists get slugged so much? What, what is the purpose behind that? Well, basically, I think our governments are addicted to money, mm. extracting money from us. I think that's, that's the underlying reason for it all. Um, the, the fact is also that motorists aren't really resistant enough to paying taxes. They, they are a soft touch. Um, they, I, I think they probably look at it and go, oh, oh, well, it's only a petrol tax, and then they don't add up the fact they're also paying registration, taxes on the price of the car, <coughs> um, taxes on tolls, all the other things. They probably don't ever add them all up and think, to themselves, you know what, I'm getting done over here. Well, well, well some of the taxes, like the old import tariff, was there to uh, protect the local industry, the luxury car tax. We don't impose luxury taxes on, say, boats, for example, or mm. diamond-encrusted bathtubs, but we do want cars worth more than about 70 grand. The, these taxes started life to try and protect the local industry. Now, in October last year, the last Holden Commodore rolled off the line at Elizabeth in South Australia. We don't have a car industry anymore. Is there any good reason to have these taxes remaining on cars? Absolutely no reason whatsoever. They should be removed. They should have been removed already. The only reason not is because the government, as I said, is addicted to raising money. What, what, they just, what, they what, just do take every chance to, uh, to extract more money from us. I, I read somewhere that the luxury car tax alone raises about $1.3 billion a year. Is that correct? Uh, I, yeah, vaguely right, but I, I have to. I haven't looked at it recently. Okay. So, but even so, I mean, is, is there any discussion going on up in Canberra to say, well, there's no local industry to support anymore? Why, why don't we just get rid of these taxes? There are a few voices. You do hear them occasionally, and it comes up in the context of, uh, do we really care about reducing the road toll? Because if we do care about that, then what we should be aiming for is for a lot more newer cars on the road. Obviously, if you make them expensive because of taxes and mm. charges, then people keep their, their older cars longer and the older cars have less in the way of safety uh, uh, equipment. And so uh, uh, when a road accident occurs, people are more likely to be seriously injured or killed. Because the funny thing about the luxury car tax, it was always set at the level of a, of a Holden Statesman or, or a Ford Fairlane or LTD. That was mm. designed, like, up to that, you could buy that. Anything above that, you were getting above yourself and you had to be taxed for the privilege yeah. of doing so. Yeah, these things are also always terribly objective. Uh, you hear it, similar sort of thinking come, comes with, well, who's wealthy, who's rich, mm. who's not paying enough tax? It's all, you know, well, someone who's earning more than me must be rich. Uh, someone who can afford a car better than mine must be rich. See, what I don't get, though, about the, the luxury car tax is that, you know, buying, let's just say, a $90,000 BMW is hardly the last word in luxury. It's not like buying a $900,000 Rolls Royce. But if you go and buy, you know, a massive boat just to cruise around Sydney Harbour and drink, you know, gin and tonics with your friend or, I don't know, outfit your house in ridiculously expensive fittings and furnishings, there is no luxury tax on that but there is on motor vehicles, which are actually practical devices with a, with a, a real day-to-day -day use. Yes. Yeah, no, there's no rhyme or reason to these, to these things. And, uh, I mean, if, if we had a, a, a sensible government approach to these things, uh, we would pay GST on them. As a cons it's a consumption tax. And there would be no extra taxes on anything. And then you would say, well, uh, if you want to spend your money on a car, you want to spend your money on a boat, you want to spend your money on fancy roller skates, it's up to you, essentially. Mm. Uh, motorbikes, which is one of my little passions. Um, really? Yeah, there's no... Uh, what sort of motorbikes do you buy or ride? I've got a BMW. Yeah. A uh, very, very fast one. And, uh, and I but love you, it. You don't just... drive it too fast? Never. Oh, right. not, not ever. Cross my heart. But, uh, but uh, there's no luxury tax on motorbikes because they've never been made in Australia. Mm. And thankfully, um, these politicians who love extracting money from our pockets have, have never said, hey, you know what, there's a, an untapped source of revenue. Mm. Okay.